All right, welcome to lecture 19. It's crazy how fast this is going uh, in BJU 4th edition geometry. We're going to get into analytical geometry now. And so this is where algebra and graphing meets geometry. We're going to be using the marriage of these skills later on. Um, but for right now, we're just going to help you see that that analytical geometry is a thing, that it exists. So we're looking at distances, midpoints, and slopes. Now we're going to be getting into triangles here, um, but we're going to be looking at them as, as objects in a Cartesian system. So you're going to be seeing triangles a little bit differently here today. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. This is review for you from Algebra. A location in a plane is described as an ordered pair of coordinates, x and then y, in parentheses with a comma between them, measured from a reference point, the origin, which we will call O, and that's 0, 0, uh, along the axis and the, the x-axis and the y-axis, the two perpendicular number lines that separate the plane into four quadrants. So algebra, you've seen this, right? Here's your Cartesian system. X goes horizontally, Y goes vertically, quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4, going from the upper right counterclockwise, okay? Zero, zero is in the middle. X gets positive this direction and negative this direction. Y gets positive this direction and negative this direction, okay? You should already remember that. Let's stick that into geometry a little bit. If you had a line and or a line segment and you wanted to measure the line segment in a Cartesian system, if it's directly along the X or Y axis or it's parallel to the X and Y axis, then you can easily easily measure it just by counting the little boxes, right? But, but if it's not, then you have to take the difference in the x-axis and the difference in the y-axis, and you're going to create a fakey triangle out of that. And then you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the length of the hypotenuse of that triangle, which in this case is the line segment you're wanting to measure. So, Difference in the x's, x2 minus x1, okay? Difference in the y's, y2 minus y1, okay? And then you square individually those values, x2 minus x1 squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared, and you're going to square root the sum. Now, this is the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But then you've essentially just solved for c. You've solved for the length of the hypotenuse. So it's being arranged this way, where the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the difference in x and the difference in y. Uh, it sounds confusing, but it's actually quite simple. You will definitely want a scientific calculator for this assignment, one that has square and square root functions. Okay, if you don't, then find one, borrow one. You will go insane trying to do this longhand today. Okay, let's do an example here. Find the distance between negative 2, 5 and 4, 1. So, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, square root the sum. Here we go. Uh, the first point is, uh, the second point is 4, 1, the first one is negative 2, 5. So x2, x1, 4 minus negative 2, quantity squared, plus 1 minus 5, quantity squared. 4 minus negative 2 is 6, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Square these two, this is 36 plus 16, that's 52. Square root that, we can leave it as a simplified radical. 2 radical 13 is the, is the uh, distance for the, uh, the line segment bounded by those two points. Okay, if you need to see that again, rewind the video. Now, a midpoint, remember, is something that divides a line segment into two equal halves. So I can take that distance formula and I can modify it slightly so that now I'm finding the average of those two points. Okay, I've got uh, point A and point B, and I want to find the average of those two points. What's exactly in the middle of them? And that will be point M, in this case, the midpoint. Now, the formula looks a little strange, but basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, here's X1, here's X2. What's the average of them? Well, to find an average, you 
add all the all the uh, species in the list together and you divide by the number of items right so in this case there's only two things so x1 plus x2 divided by 2 what's the average of the x's what's the average of the y's and then i have the uh, the value or the location of my midpoint okay um, so here's an example uh, given that x is negative 2 3 and y is 1 5 what's the midpoint of the line segment bounded by those two points so I have the average of the x's and the average of the y's. x, negative 2, and 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Divided by 2 would be 1 half, or 0.5. Here I have 3 and 5. That's 8. Divided by 2 is 4. So my, my coordinate system that results from this is negative 1 half, 4. And I could just plot that, and I would find the midpoint of that line segment. Find the coordinates of b if m is negative 1, 1 half, sorry, if m negative 1, 1 half is the midpoint of a, b, and a is here. So now I'm going to use that same idea. I'm going to go backwards. And I'm going to say that negative 1, 1 half is the midpoint, and these things get me to negative 1, 1 half. So I've got to solve this equation, and it's going to equal one half, negative 1, and I'm going to solve this equation, and it's going to equal one half. So this is just only slightly more complicated. I need to solve for x2. Um, so I can multiply both sides by 2 and then uh, bring the negative 3 over by adding 3 to both sides and I wind up with x2 equaling 1. And then over here 4 plus y2 divided by 2 equals 1 half. I need to multiply both sides by 2 and then get the 4 over by subtracting 4 from both sides, and I wind up with y2 equals negative 3. So my second point is 1, negative 3. All right, remember slope? You, when you were doing algebra last year, um, we are going to be using slope now to calculate the angles of lines, and we'll again use this in the, in the uh, case of triangles later when we're solving for the angle of a hypotenuse of a triangle. The slope of a line M is the ratio of its rise, which is the vertical change to its run, rise over run. This is something that you, I'm sure, chanted as a mantra back in Algebra 1. Um, and you're going to be using that here now. So slope is rise over run, change in the Y over change in the X. So now if we're going to be putting that into a, a, Cart a Cartesian system, um, rise over run would be change in y over change in x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 uh, minus x1. So it's just the change in those two coordinate systems. Here's a picture to help you with that. We have a line here that goes through point P1 and P2, and I want to know what is the slope of the line that goes through those two points. So I would take the x value and the x value, and I would subtract x2 minus x1, and I would get a value for the run. And I would subtract y2 minus y1, and I'd get a value for the rise. Rise over run will give me the slope of that line. Okay, So let's find the slope of this line. Um, the rise in this case, going from left to right, is actually negative 3. It's going down. So it's going down one, two, sorry, one, two, three, and run is four. It goes over one, two, three, four. Um, and why did I pick those points? Well, if you're just going to look at a Cartesian system, make it easy on yourself and find times when the line goes right through the intersection of two points. I could have gotten the same answer if I would have picked this and this, but then I'd have to say, well, how, what fraction is it on this system? So make it easy for yourself. Pick times when it goes right through the intersection points and use those points, okay? So the rise is negative 3, the run is 4, so the slope will be um, negative 3 over 4. It's going down 3 for every 4 it goes over. Let's do this again. Find the slope of a line that goes through 1, negative 4, and 3, 2. So here we're going to use two points that are on a system, and we're going to subtract the y's from each other and subtract the x's and then use that to create the fraction. So change in y over change in x, 2 minus negative 4 is 6 and 3 minus 1 is 2. So the slope there is 6 halves. You could simplify that to 3. Okay, if you need to see that again, go ahead and rewind the video. Something that I'm sure you remember from Algebra 1 is you, we always want to look at slopes going from left to right as if you are reading the page, right? 
And if it has a positive slope, it's going up as you move from left to right. If it's going down as you move from left to right, it's got a negative slope. So positives and negatives up to the right or down to the right. Okay, keep those straight in your mind. Always go left to right. Um, the slope of any horizontal line is zero because it doesn't go up or down as you move from left to right. And then the weird ones would be a vertical line where the slope is undefined because now you're dividing by zero. There's no run for its rise, so you can't divide by zero. So the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Okay, These are just some review concepts from algebra. Um, now, we're going to use these ideas to talk about lines that are parallel. If two lines are parallel, then they have the same slope. They rise and run at the same rate as each other, right? Non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have equal slopes. So again, this lets you go backwards and forward through this postulate. If they have equal slopes, they're parallel. If they are parallel, they have equal slopes, right? Any two vertical lines are parallel. So we'll just cover the one time when you can't really do math with it and say if it's vertical, it's parallel to every other vertical line in the system. Perpendicular lines have slopes, the product of which is negative 1. And at first you're like, right, I don't, I don't get it. No, think about it for a minute. Non-horizontal and non-perpendicular. Obviously, horizontal perpendicular lines are horizontal perpendicular to each other, and you can't multiply their slopes because 0 times anything is 0, and then you're multiplying by, by an undefined thing, and it doesn't work. But if they're not horizontal and perpendicular, if they're tilty at all, and you multiply their slopes together, you get negative 1. So if the slope of one line is 2 and the slope of the other line is negative 1 half, that means that this one is rising 2 for every 1 that it goes over. Negative 1 half, this one goes down 1 for every 2 that it goes over. Those two lines will form a right angle. Um, any two lines, the product of whose slope is negative 1, are perpendicular. Okay, um, And then you can also go forward and backward through this. This is one of those if and only ifs, right? Non-vertical, non-horizontal lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. And so you can you can say, hey, these two slopes multiply together equal negative 1. They're perpendicular. Or you can say, uh, these two lines are perpendicular, so their slope must be negative 1 when you multiply them together. Okay, you can go forward or backward. So let's use these concepts in a couple of examples here. I've got a, si a set of points, A, B, C, D, and E. And I want to see, are these lines perpendicular or parallel? Um, and, uh, or maybe neither. So if I look at A, B, and C, D, I'm going to subtract the values of Y between A and B. And I'm going to set that over the difference in the values of their X's, rise over run. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing for C, D. And then we'll see what those slopes look like. If we do the math, the difference in the y's for a and b is 1. And the difference in the x's is 3. I'm sorry, negative 1 and then 3. And so it's a negative 1 third slope. Uh, if I do the same thing for c, I find out that it's also a negative 1 third slope. So if the two slopes are the same, then the lines are parallel. So a, b, and c, d are parallel. And I didn't even have to draw them out. I can just determine that by their slope. Let's look at uh, AE and BC. If I look at those lines, I find that the slope for AE is negative one-third, and the slope for BC is 3. Now, those aren't the same number. But what happens if you multiply negative one-third by 3? The answer is negative 1. And so the lines are perpendicular to each other. Okay, that's the end of it. If you have any questions, we'll go over it in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.